the very first part you're going to start seeing that I'm going to continue addressing the common core state standard. This is some new standards that the uh, state is introducing for all the schools in California and actually this is nationwide so that uh, you, you know. But this is, this is just to let you know what we're doing. So uh, yesterday I introduced zero pairs using that video, remember that? And pretty much it's addressing this part of the standard. It says, uh, understand subtraction and rational numbers using the additive inverse. That's the additive inverse property. I'm going to introduce that in a little bit. But before I do, let me recap on what we saw yesterday on the video. Yesterday, I showed you a video of me, right? And I was going to, I, I was doing some yard work and I was going to plant a rosemary bush, right? However, this is the animation part. I made it into a little cartoon, so here it is, just to recap. And let's say I was to dig a hole that was seven feet deep. I start with a ground, and what is that ground called? Ground. ground zero. So here's my ground. There it is. And let me, let me get me in the picture. There I am, all buff. There it is. And I make a seven foot hole. There it is. So that is seven feet. And then if I dug seven feet, the dirt should be out here, right? So there's my dirt. And how many feet of dirt? Seven. seven. Okay, and I said, if there is no dirt, the word no is a negative, isn't it? So that makes this a negative seven. And over here, there is dirt. It's a yes, and yes is a positive word. So therefore, this is a positive seven. Remember that? So therefore, and I said, these two are called opposite numbers. That's why when we get negative 7 and positive 7 and we combine them both, they make 0. Remember that? And from now on, I said, we're going to call them 0 pairs. So far, so good? So that was a quick intro. And for those of you that are wondering what does ATK stand for, that stands for Activating Prior Knowledge. Prior Knowledge being the video that I showed you yesterday, right? All right, so with that said, let's start our lesson. Here we go. So our objective for today, our objective for today says I can define and represent integers using integer tiles and zero pairs. Once again, I can define and represent integers using integer tiles and zero pairs. Let's read it together. One, two, three. I can define and represent integers using integer tiles and zero pairs. So by looking at it, we already know that it's color coded and you know what each piece means by now, right? So if I was to ask you these questions, what is the concept for today, and what are we doing with it? First of all, think about it. What is the concept for today? What are we doing with it? So, so to your neighbor, let know what the concept for today is. And let them know what we're doing with it. So I heard integers and zero pairs. Those are the major concepts, major ideas, right? So for right now, I just want to make sure I clarify what integers are, because I already kind of did an introduction of zero pairs, didn't I? Yeah, right? But the one I haven't done one for is for integers. So what I'm going to do, we're going to use the Freire model. You have that little box. So if you see that box that you have on your note, Cornell note, that's called a Freire model. Tell your neighbor what it's called. A Freire model is used to uh, define terms and to see examples and non-examples on the same area so it's easier to compare and contrast so we're going to fill that in so the term that goes in the middle we're going to write in here integers do that now please integers and once again if you have your color pens use your pens please uh, it's up to you integers definition it says integers oh my bad sorry Integers are whole numbers including their opposites. 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 Tell your neighbor the definition, please. Integers are whole numbers including their opposites. All right, so now that we have our definition down, let's understand what it means. We now memorize it, but let's find out what it means, okay? Once again, integers are whole numbers including their opposites. Pens down, writing utensils down, please. 
You'll finish copying right now. Just put your pens down. I need your attention up front. So check this out. It says, integers are, what are they? Whole numbers, including their opposites. So we know the word opposite. But what are whole numbers? Let's think about it. Whole numbers, let me give you the definition. The simplest way I can think of it is counting numbers, including zero. So think about it. When you're in kindergarten, you were about to go run to the swings and the lady told you, no running. Remember that? So then you got to the swings and then you tell your friend, I'm going to race you to the top. Ready? Negative one. No, right? We didn't start counting with negative, did we? We start counting with what? Positive. One, two, three. Okay, so those are counting numbers. But in order for them to be whole numbers, it's counting numbers including what? Zero. So check this out. If I was to draw a number line here, here it is. So whole numbers are counting numbers including zero. So here's zero. Counting numbers are one, two, three, all the way up to infinity. Because I can continue counting and counting. Is that correct? Okay, copy that, please. So what you're doing right now with the number line, that is, those are called whole numbers because they're called counting numbers, including zero. Okay. All right. Pens down, pencils down, eyes up here. Writing utensils down, please. You'll finish copying right now. So now check this out. We're still not done with the definition. I just defined part of it. So let's go back to the definition of integers. The definition says for integers, integers are whole numbers. We already know that these are whole numbers. But then what, it, what does it say? including their opposite. So let's look at these numbers. What would be the opposite of 1? Opposite of 2? So therefore the rest would be negative 3 dot 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 negative infinity. Copy that for me. So those are opposites. Fairly simple? Yeah, right? And once again, before I get started, and going into the lesson, I just want to make sure you understand the concept we're talking about. Okay? So now, integers are all these right here, all of them. Counting numbers, whole numbers because they include zero, and all the opposite of the counting numbers. Are we there so far? So let me give you another one, and you tell me to see if it qualifies for an example. How about, is 12 an integer? Yes, because it could be counted in here, right? So copy that. And what is its opposite? Negative so write 12, comma, and negative 12. So those are integers. How about 155? Is that a counting number? Yes. And what's its opposite? Negative 155. So those are known as integers. Yes. So copy that, please. How about uh, negative 28? That's not a counting number, but it is an integer, isn't it? Yes, because it's part of this number line where we have the counting numbers or the whole numbers and their opposite. So copy that. And what is its opposite? 28. And the last example, negative 267, is that a uh, integer? Yes. And what is its opposite? 267. So copy that, please. Okay, peek over to your neighbor's paper. Make sure they have those written down, please, before we move on. Okay. All right. So, once again, like I said, I like this tool, this, this Freer model, because it helps us to compare and contrast to make sure that we understand what we're looking at. So, I want you to put your uh, writing utensils down, please. Pens down, pencils down. Okay. So, we know what integers are. We, they are all these right here on the number line. And they're here, and I can continue giving you examples, such as what would be another number that I can think of? Uh, 23. Yeah. There is no other number but that one. Not just kidding. Anyway. 
23 is an integer, what would be its opposite? Negative, Negative 23. So you get the idea, right? So those are integers. However, everybody look up to the none examples. I'm going to give you none examples. Don't copy these yet. I want you to observe them first. Here we go. Look at these. Don't say it out loud. Keep the thoughts to yourself. Look at all these. Look at these. Look at these. And think about it. Oh, I think I'm missing one more. Uh, oh, okay. So think about it. Why are these integers? And why are these not integers? Think about it first. All right, talk it over to your neighbors. Why are these integers? Why are these none? Um, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear by by looking at them that integers do not have any what decimals or fractions. So let's say your uh, your BFF was to come in tomorrow. They're not here today. And they have the same class, uh, maybe a different period. And then they come and they're like, hey, what did you do with Mr. Q? Oh, we covered integers. So in your own words, think about it. What would be the most important thing to remember about integers? What are they? Think about it. Whole number. So over here where it says critical attributes, the first thing that you would write is that they are whole numbers. Write that in there, please. And to be specific, whole numbers do not have what? So in parentheses, you write no fractions or decimals. Your friend's going to be like, really, that's it? Whole numbers, no fractions or decimals? Yeah. Those are integers. That's it. Mm, wait a minute. I think I'm missing something. What's another thing that I'm missing in order for them to be integers? Whole numbers and... Yes? They're opposites. Make sure you write in their opposites. Whole numbers and their opposites. So like that, your BFF will be like, yes. Yeah. Everybody got it? Pretty simple? Okay. So, once again, any questions on how to fill out the Freyer model? Once again, I know this is the very first time we do the first set of notes. I just want to make sure everybody gets each piece of the fair model. So now that we have the critical attributes, I want you to copy the none examples. I know I didn't tell you to, but I want you to copy those down and have them as reference. None examples, please. Copy those down, please. So with that said, uh, let me continue. The next part, you don't copy. I need you to just pay attention. Here it goes. Eyes up here. So I already introduced um, a property. And before I go into the property, I just want to make sure that we're clear on the uh, on uh, integers. It says, which of the following is an example of integers? Look at it, A or B. And it says, justify your answer. I'll pick a volunteer for this one. Yes, or in the front. B, why? Because there's no decimal or fraction. I'll take that. And if I was to ask, what is an integer in your own words? What would you tell your BFS? Uh, over here in the back. Yeah, they're whole numbers, they're no fraction or decimals, and Whole numbers with, with no fractions or decimals with their opposites. I'll take that. Okay? So check this out. Yesterday we started this lesson with a video on a property, but I, instead of giving you the property, I said those numbers were called zero pairs. But this is the property, the additive inverse property. Additive inverse property says a number and its opposite add up to give zero. Additive inverse property says a number and its opposite add up to give zero. Additive inverse property is a, is a property that says a number and its opposite add up to give zero. For example, a plus negative a equals zero. So if I was to substitute values for a, let's say I get 7 plus negative 7, that gives us what? Okay, those are opposite numbers, is that correct? Okay, how about this one? Negative 15 plus 15, that's? Zero. How about this one? Zero equals to negative 2,500 plus 2,500. What is the name of all these pairs of numbers? Zero, zero pairs. They, it is the additive inverse property, but from now on we're going to call it what? Zero, zero pairs. Additive inverse property, but now we're going to call it? Zero pairs. 
additive inverse property, and we're going to call them. What is the property? But we're going to call it zero pair. So we're cool with that, right? Now, we need to know this because as soon as we start going into adding and subtracting integers, where some of you got confused last year, this has to be clear. Are we clear with that so far? Okay. The other property that I'm going to introduce is this one, the identity property of addition. Identity property of addition. What that says is that the sum of an of zero and any number, it's the number itself. So check this out. Zero plus a gives us a. That's why it's called the identity, because we get the identical number. Check this out. Zero plus seven, what does that give us? It's the identical number. That's why it's called the identity property. Negative 10 plus 0 is negative 10, and this one is 1,000 plus 0 equals 1,000. Okay? Any questions up to right there? Tomorrow we're going to finish up this lesson, so I'm going to stop right there. There is no homework for tonight. I'm going to upload this video so you can have it as reference on, on YouTube. All right? So with that said, put away your stuff, guys. Uh, get some rest, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.